Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. In this video we're going to talk about the, the third goal here in section 11.2, how to define a geometric series and determine when they converge. Alright, so what is a geometric series? A geometric series has this form. And the important thing about this form is not just to recognize it in its sigma notation, but to really see what's happening in its expanded form. The big idea for a geometric series is we start with some value a, and to get to the next term in the series, we simply multiply by r. And then to the next term, we multiply by r again, so on and so forth. So we generate this series by simply multiplying each term by r to get to the next term. And so, of course, the first thing we have to be able to do is, given some series, can we recognize it as being geomet geometric? And if it is geometric, can we rewrite it in this sigma notation? So let's look at an example. Let's say I have this series that looks like 3 plus 2 plus 4 thirds plus 8 ninths plus 16 twenty sevenths plus dot, 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 dot. And so the idea is this geometric. Once again, the big idea is that we're just multiplying here by r. And so if we looked at that and said, if I take this term and divide it by this term, that'd be a r divided by a, I would get r. It turns out that's true for any consecutive terms in this geometric series. If I divide these two, I would get a r cubed divided by a r squared, once again equal to r. So I can do that same thing with this series. I can divide consecutive terms and see what that ratio would be. So if I look at these two terms, I would take 2 divided by 3. I'm guessing that's my value for r. And now instead of dividing the rest of the terms consecutively to make sure it's r, I can just really see, does multiplying by r get me to my next term? So for instance, if I take 2 times 2 thirds, do I get to 4 thirds? I do. Multiply by 2 thirds again, do I get here? Yes, I do. So on and so forth. So it does look like it's geometric, and I have found the value of my r. Now the only other value I need is the value for a. What is a? a is always the first term of my series. So a is 3, my r value is 2 thirds, and the rest of the pieces I just pull from my template. And so I've identified this series as geometric, and I've rewritten into sigma notation. Now why? Why is it important for us to recognize these geometric series? It's important because we can determine the convergence of a geometric series. Remember, to show that a series converges, we need to show that the sequence of partial sums converges, that it has some finite limit. And a geometric series is one of those nice series where we can actually write an equation for our sequence of partial sums. So how are we going to generate that equation? Well, here is an example of a geometric series. I've defined the sum to be s. So I'm letting s be the sum of the series. s is really the thing I want to find out now. Now what I can do is I can take both sides of this equation and multiply through by r. On the left hand side I would get s times r. But when I multiply the right hand side by r, I'm going to take this term times r, and what I'll get is I'll get a term that looks like this. When I multiply this piece by r, I'll get a term that looks like a r squared. When I multiply this term, I'm going to get a term that looks like a r cubed, so on and so forth. Until whatever term is right here, the n minus 2 term here, when I multiply that, I'll get a term that looks like a r to the n minus 1. And lastly, when I take this term times r, I got a times r to the n minus 1 plus 1, I'll add that 1 on the exponent there, and I'll get a r to the n. So now I basically have a series where I took my old series and multiplied through by r. Now why would I do that? Well now I have these two sets of equations and I can actually subtract these two equations. On the left hand side I'll get s minus s times r. On the right hand side I will get a minus 0, a, but then I'll get a r minus a r, that cancels out. This cancels out. All these in between terms will cancel out except for this last piece here. And so I'll have a minus a times r to the n. And so now I have this nice condensed equation, and I can solve for s. To do that, I will factor an s out of this side. I will factor an a out of the other side. And I'll divide through by 1 minus r. And now I have an expression for the nth term of the sequence of partial sums. 
Now actually this expression in itself is a very useful thing. It lets me calculate the sum of n terms of this series. So if I'm summing from i equals 1 up to n of my series, I know that sum will be exactly this value. And in some applications, I don't actually have an infinite series. I have a finite geometric series. But it's very convenient that I have this closed form expression for that sum. Now, what I'm really looking for is the sum of the infinite series. And so that will be the limit of this sequence of partial sums. And so I'm looking now at the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression. And really, to determine the current convergence, I'm really just looking at this term. So that term is r raised to the n power. I'm really saying what happens to this thing as n goes to infinity. And really, there's only two cases. If the absolute value of r is less than 1. So take an example, like r equals 1 half. Well, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 half to the n power, if I keep taking 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, those values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So in that case, the limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n would be equal to 0. Now, what if the magnitude of r was bigger than 1? Well, in that case, what would happen? Well, we'd be looking at maybe a value like 2, for instance. 2 raised to the n power, so that's 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the fourth. These values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So in this case, this does not converge. So using this information, we can see that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of partial sums converges only if the absolute value of r is less than 1, and in which case, what happens to it? Well, then that r to the n piece will go to 0, and we'll be left with a minus 1 minus r. Once again, that's only true if the absolute value is less than 1. And since this is the limit of the sequence of partial sums, that tells us what the series sums to. So now we know what that limit is, we can say that the sum of the series, a times r to the n minus 1, n equals 1 to infinity, any geometric series, is equal to a over 1 minus r if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And so this is the rule for convergence for geometric series. Now let's see if we can apply that. So here we have the summary of our two geometric series formulas, the one for the finite series and the one for the infinite series. Now let's see if we can practice applying them. So this first series I have the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 3 times the quantity 1 half raised to the i looks to be a geometric series. But it's not quite in the right form to match my formula. Here I have r to the i minus 1. So I have to take my series and put it into a form that matches my formula. And to do this, I might have to use some exponent rules. So here I have i equals 1 to infinity. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this 1 half to the i as 3 times 1 half times 1 half to the i minus 1. And now I can see if I were to multiply 1 half to the i minus 1 times 1 half, I'd be adding 1 to the exponent. So I can see this will get me that same expression 1 half to the i. But now I've written this form. So now my a piece is 3 times 1 half, or 3 halves, and my r piece is 1 half. So that means I can apply my formula, and I can write a over 1 minus r. And I can just simplify this. So this is 3 halves divided by 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 half. And then instead of dividing by a fraction, I can flip and multiply to really multiply the number by 2, and I'll get a value of 3. So that infinite series sums up to 3. All right, let's look at the next case. So here, I have an expanded form series. I have to see if this is geometric. So what am I going to do? I'm going to see if I can find an r by dividing consecutive terms. 4 divided by 3 is 4 thirds. And I say, if just multiplying by 4 thirds get me to here, it does. To here, it does. So it looks like it is geometric. I would write it as the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of my a value times my r value raised to the i minus 1. So one thing I could do here is apply my formula. And if I did just apply my formula, I would get 3 over 1 minus 4 thirds. And then I'd have 3 over negative 1 third. I'd have negative 9. 
But I have to be able to look at that and say that value doesn't make any sense. Right here I have the infinite sum of positive values, and somehow I'm getting negative 9. That answer can absolutely not be right. And what's the problem? The problem is I'm applying my formula when it doesn't apply. This only applies if the absolute value of r is less than 1. In this case, my r value is too big, so this series does not converge. All right, let's look at the next case. So here, I once again, the tricky part is trying to rewrite this into the formula form. Right? I have a times r to the i minus 1. So in this case, once again, it's about using exponent rules. So I'm going to write this as the sum from i equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to pull a factor of 3 out of that numerator. So that's minus 1 down here. And then I can rewrite that as 3 times 3 sevenths to the i minus 1. And now once again, sorry, that's 3 sevenths. And now I can see that I do have an a value and an r value, and I fit my form. So now I should have 3 over 1 minus 3 sevenths. 3 over 4 sevenths it looks like I'll have 21 fourths as the sum of that series. And then the last one. This doesn't even look like it's a series. It just looks like a, a repeated decimal here. I put a little line over the top here. What does that really mean when I kind of break down this decimal? This value, if I just had this position right here, is, well, 4 tenths. And just this position right here is 4 hundredths. And if I add those two values together, I'd get 0.44. And so I can just keep on writing each position and adding them together and I'm basically forming a geometric series that represents this repeating decimal. As I write that out, I can see then that it is geometric, and that to get from one term to the next, I'm multiplying by one-tenth. So that means my a value is the first term of the series. My r value is one-tenth, so one-tenth of the i minus one, starting at i equals one, going to infinity. I can check my a value now, and my r value. Is my r value less than one? It is. So now I apply my formula, I get 4 tenths over 1 minus 1 tenth. That's 4 tenths over 9 tenths. And when I flip and multiply, I'll get 4 tenths times 10 over 9. I'll cancel my, time, my tens, and the net result will be 4 ninths. And so actually, this is one little application of a geometric series. It allows me to take a repeating decimal and to write it as a fraction. All right, so geometric series, we've seen that we've seen how to take a series and term it as geometric. We've seen that we have very nice convergence rules for geometric series, and we've been able to apply those to find out when and what a series converged to. All right, that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.